All right, hey folks, I haven't done a, a video log in a while, so I wanted to do a new one for today. And uh, the subject of this video log is going to be thinking of, or thinking about your training in macro, okay? And what I mean by that is thinking about your training, not in terms of an individual session or an individual week or an individual um, cycle, but um, thinking about your training year by year. And this is something that any trainee can do. It could be uh, uh, an advanced level lifter who thinks about his or her training year by year, or it could even be just a beginning level lifter. And, uh, and so my suggestion is going to be that for, for you, regardless of where your experience is, that, uh, that, you, that you start taking into consideration um, uh, your training on a year by year basis. Okay? And um, so my philosophy of uh, of, of multi-year training for, for powerlifters um, uh, has actually sort of sort of come to uh, codification over the last year. All right, it's really been in the last year that I've developed my particular theory of of, uh, of how I would train a powerlifter on a year by year basis. All right, and actually um, the uh, the uh, the trajectory of training for a powerlifter starting from a very beginning point, starting from day one in the gym and ending at, say, an advanced or an elite level um, would, for me, be the same if I were training a powerlifter as uh, if I were training an athlete for any other sport, you name it, it would be the same. Um, it would be the same if we were talking about a basketball player, we were talking about uh, an Olympic lifter, uh, a crossfitter. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter what the sport is. It doesn't really matter who the athlete is. The trajectory for training over a span of years would, for me, always be the same. Okay, um, uh, there are only going to be two instances in an athlete's career in which it is going to be advantageous for that athlete to do almost exclusively sports-specific training. Okay, and I'm going to speak about this in terms of powerlifting, but um, but this for me holds true for an athlete, regardless of discipline. Okay, and. I'm not a strength and conditioning coach. I have no experience training athletes, uh, nor do I. Uh, nor do I intend to try to give advice to those of you um, who are perhaps competitive in sports outside of powerlifting. But I'm just sharing my thoughts here. Um, there are only two instances in a powerlifter's career in which that powerlifter is going to be doing sports-specific training almost exclusively. Okay. Um, the first instance is when they are an absolute beginner. The second instance is, a, is when they have accumulated a considerable amount of experience and, um, and are considered to be an advanced level lifter. Okay? Um, if you look at the programming for most uh, quote-unquote beginners, um, most of it is primarily sports-specific training. Okay? So if you look at strong lifts, if you look at, um, if you look at uh, Mark Ripito's programs, um, those programs are based and are focused on the three main lifts, okay, squat, bench press, and deadlift. And the philosophy there is that you get lifters learning those lifts from a very early point, okay, you start them low in intensity, you start them low in volume, you get them learning those movements, understanding those motor patterns, um, uh, learning for themselves correct technique at a very early point and you take advantage of easy neuromuscular gains at the beginning end of a lifter's career. And you do all of this while on a caloric surplus, which allows you to train as much as possible and allows you to get, <clears throat> get stronger at sort of like an expedited rate. All right, um, so uh, at the beginning of a lifter's career, for the first year, give or take, I'm, I'm speaking in years here, but uh, it's just, it's a matter of whenever that lifter is ready to progress to the next step. So it could be a year, could be more than that, could be less than that. But for the first year or whenever, the beginning stage of a lifter's career, that lifter is going to be doing primarily sports-specific training, okay? If you want to be a power lifter, that means doing the lifts that you would do in your sport. Squat, bench press, deadlift, okay? Not a squat variant, not a bench press variant, not a deadlift variant, not any sort of other accessory exercise that you can think of, but those three lifts, doing those lifts and primarily those lifts, okay? The only exception would be to do other lifts, um, 
that would uh, perhaps anticipate and prevent any sort of asymmetries, muscle imbalances that might that might occur. Um, for example, for example, doing a certain amount of heavy rowing, heavy lateral rowing, in order to counter heavy pressing, in order to keep um, uh, certain muscles from becoming overdeveloped, um, uh, and other and and. In addition to that, any sort of preventive or prehab work. But outside of that stuff, primarily what you want to do as a beginning lifter is you want to do the main movements, okay? Um, as you reach an intermediate level and beyond, an advanced intermediate level, so over the next few years, as you gain an experience, as you improve your lifts, what will invariably happen is in each of your individual lifts, you will develop weaknesses, okay? If you watch a beginning lifter lift, and if you watch an advanced lifter lift, assuming that beginning lifter has had all of 10 minutes or so to be shown proper technique on a lift and is trying to do the best they can with it, um, <clears throat> if that lifter is a low enough functioning athlete, in other words, if they're not active and athletic outside of the gym space, um, that beginning level lifter and that advanced level lifter will fail more than likely a super max or an above their one rep max lift in exactly the same fashion. They'll just fail it, okay? For everybody in between, there exists some sort of breakdown in technique, okay? And that breakdown in technique can be traced back to a weakness um, that was not necessarily developed um, uh, as a result of training, but came about as a result of training because they developed their strengths um, in sort of a, an asynchronous, an asynchronous manner. Okay, so um, so certain muscle groups, certain portions of a lift outpaced the development of other muscle groups or other portions of a lift. Okay, um, when I say weakness, okay, I could be referring to a weakness of a particular muscle group, which could be um, your, uh, your glutes are weak, your hamstrings are weak, your, your quads are weak on your squat, whatever that particular muscle weakness is. <clears throat> and I could also be talking about a weakness in your strength curve, okay? And your strength curve is the rate at which you produce force on the concentric portion of a lift, okay? It's on the eccentric and concentric, but I'm talking specifically about the upwards portion of that lift. So when you squat up out of the hole, when you press off your chest, um, that portion of the lift, the lift where you're, you're doing the lifting, um, that's what we're referring to as, as the concentric here. And, um, and your strength curve is the rate at which you produce force um, over the course of that concentric. And uh, so you watch me deadlift, okay, and I produce a lot of force uh, right off the ground, but then I, I, I really stall out past my knees, okay? I have an obvious weakness in my strength curve, and it's at the top of my lift, right? Um, that usually won't be present in an untrained novice, okay? Usually they're just, they, they don't have any of, any of these sorts of imbalances because they haven't done any training, so they don't have any strengths. And uh, a strength is defined by negation. It's defined by what it's not, okay? So you can't have, you can't have strength without having weakness, okay, if that makes any sense. Um, so they have, they have no weaknesses because they have no strengths. Everything is, is equally uh, pitifully weak at that point. Um, so um, so we, we can talk about weaknesses in a number of different ways, and there are a number of different ways in which one would uh, uh, fix these individual weaknesses, okay? Um, what you want to do as you become a more experienced lifter, as you advance out of that beginning stage, is you move further and further and further away from the main movements, okay? So you start to address your weaknesses, and at first, what you want to try and do is you want to try and address your weaknesses within the lift, okay? Because this is the easiest way to do it. Um, to give you an example, uh, a lot of people like to think about their weaknesses only in terms of weak or lagging muscle groups, okay? So let's say I have a squatter, and that squatter cannot keep their chest up when they come out of the hole, okay? The chest drops every single time, all right? Um, what's their weakness, if you're going to define it in terms of a muscle group? Well, it could be that they have a weak upper to mid-back, okay? You could say that that's the case, because they can't keep it upright, okay? Um, in reality, 
The inverse could also be true, okay? It could be that they have a very strong upper to mid back, all right? And what they're doing is they are aligning over or they are um, a covering up from a weakness in their posterior chain. In other words, they're letting their hips rise first, okay? Because let's say they have, a, let's say they have weak glutes. Um, they're letting their hips rise first and they're putting themselves in bad position because they have this overdeveloped muscle group. My point here is that it's really difficult to determine an individual weakness based on um, how a lift looks, okay? But strength curve weaknesses are pretty easily defined and uh, the way in which you fix a strength curve weakness is first within the movement itself, all right? Um, <clears throat> as you get better about identifying your weaknesses, as they become more apparent, then you start looking further and further outside of the lift in order to fix those weaknesses. So this is going to be the period of time in which you are going to be doing a bit of quote-unquote bodybuilding, okay? And the reason why you do bodybuilding is because you want muscle size in the muscle groups that are the prime movers in each of the three lifts that you perform, all right? You want to look ideally suited to lift the sorts of weights that you want to lift as an advanced lifter. Um, if you look at Olympic lifters, they all look the same way, okay? They all have the same sort of, they, they all have the same sort of physique. They're all proportioned in a similar manner, okay? They have muscles where it matters for them, and uh, you want the same, and you do this over the intermediate, intermediate period. This is why we in introduce isolation and single joint movements. This is why we introduce hypertroph, or uh, hyper, I can't speak today, hypertrophic, movements um, in which you're, uh, again, focusing on uh, increasing muscle size, in particular muscle groups. Um, <clears throat> this is why we do all of these things that aren't main movements, okay? Um, once you reach an advanced level, once you have the physique of a top-level lifter in um, your particular weight class, once you have um, a strength curve that has no glaring weaknesses, once you have no glaring breakdowns in each of your three main lifts, um, you are what's considered to be an advanced level lifter, okay? You've ironed out all of the problems. And the best thing you can do for your training at that point, once you've drifted pretty far away from the three main lifts, is to return to them, okay? And again, train them almost exclusively, as if you were a beginner again. But what you're going to be doing is you're going to be <clears throat> attacking those three main lifts with a great deal more volume and a great deal more intensity um, than before. So this is already implicit in training programs. You look at beginner programs, uh, it's all sport specific training, okay? Um, you look at a lot of intermediate programs, they introduce a lot of exercise variations, okay? And uh, if you look at the advanced high volume programs like Shaco, um, like something like Smolov, those programs are going to have you, again, doing the main movements for a considerable amount of volume in order to really develop motor patterns, um, really de develop uh, a sort of understanding of these, of these three main lifts. And, um, and so this is my approach. This is how I would train uh, powerlifters on a year-by-year on a -year basis, okay? Um, if you don't know whether you're beginning, intermediate, or advanced, just, uh, just look at where your weaknesses are, okay? Do you have weaknesses? How egregious are they? And how would you go about fixing them, okay? Most of us are in that intermediate level um, because most of us have weaknesses that, that need to be fixed. I'm still in a, a sort of intermediate level because, um, because I still have some, some pretty glaring weaknesses, both in my strength curve and, uh, and, and in uh, particular muscle groups that I need to fix before I advance up to a higher level. Um, Anyway, I hope that's helpful for you. I haven't done one of these video logs in uh, in quite a while, so I figured I'd I'd speak about um, something that that is that is of interest to me and has been on my mind for a little bit. Um, keep checking in. I will have more videos for you very soon. Those videos will not include squats. Um, I won't be squatting for another week and a half. And there's an explanation of that. There's going to be an explanation that comes along with that in my next squatting video. But anyway, keep checking in. More videos very soon.